Hello students. The topic for today's online lecture is Physiology of Lactation. In this lecture session, you will understand in detail about the phases of lactation, the suckling reflex and the importance of lactation. Breastfeeding is the characteristic feature of all the mammals including human beings which has evolved as the best method of nourishing the newborn. The mammary glands or the breasts play an important role in the lactation process. Mammary glands are present in both the sexes but it is well developed only in females after they go through puberty. At birth the breasts are rudimentary that is they don't have any function. During puberty when a female undergoes the state of thylark at about 9 to 11 years of age breasts start to develop. It is only at the time of menarch that is the first time of occurrence of bleeding the breast starts developing to the fullest under the influence of female hormones. Various hormones are necessary for the full growth and development of mammary glands. These are first hormone is estrogen. It is the primary hormone responsible for the ductal growth and fat deposition. It also causes thickening of the nipples. Second is progesterone. The development of glandular tissue of breast mainly depends on this hormone. Next is the role of other hormones like growth hormone, thyroxin, cortisol and insulin. All these hormones enhance the overall growth and development of breast at all stages. During pregnancy, the hormones secreted by corpus luteum and placenta are responsible for the further growth of the breast. Another very important hormone called as prolactin causes development of breast during pregnancy and lactation. Now, before we discuss the phases of lactation, first understand the types and composition of human milk. Human milk is of three types, namely cholesterol, transition milk and mature milk. Cholesterol is deep yellow colored fluid secreted by the mammary glands during the first few days of postpartum period. It contains high amount of protein and many immunoglobulins and white blood cells. Transition or intermediate milk is secreted from the 6th to 15th day after the childbirth. Mature milk is formed from the 15th day after delivery and continues as it is for the entire lactation period. Human milk is made up of 88% water and 11.5% solids like lactose, proteins, potassium, sodium, calcium and vitamin A. Human milk is a balanced diet for the baby because it contains the first class proteins namely casinogen and lactalbumin, carbohydrates, fats, minerals and vitamins. Now let us see the different phases of lactation. The physiology of lactation can be divided into four phases. First is preparation of breast for milk secretion that is mammogenesis. Second is synthesis and secretion of milk that is lactogenesis. Third is expulsion of milk called as galactokinesis. And fourth is maintenance of lactation that is galactopoiesis. Under mammogenesis during pregnancy the breasts develop fully and are made ready for milk secretion after the delivery. Lactogenesis occurs in two stages. Under the first stage of lactogenesis during the later few weeks of pregnancy small amount of fluid is secreted in the alveolar cells. The rate of secretion is 1 by 100 as that of the milk secretion in postpartum period. So the amount is very very less. This stage 1 secretion of milk occurs due to high plasma levels of prolactin and placental hormone HCS that is human chorionosomatotrophin hormone. But due to suppressive action of estrogen and progesterone on lactation free flow of milk never occurs during the pregnancy period. It is the second stage of lactogenesis phase when initiation of lactation occurs. 
immediately after the birth sudden loss of estrogen and progesterone secretion from the placenta allows the lactogenic effect of prolactin to act and thus the milk secretion rate increases to 500 to 750 ml per day and in the next 1 to 7 days breasts begin to secrete milk instead of colostrum the third phase of lactation is galactokinesis that means expulsion of milk For a continuous milk expulsion from the breast, suckling reflex and some local mechanisms are required to act on the breasts. Apart from suckling reflex, hormone oxytocin helps in milk ejection from the breasts. Oxytocin hormone contracts the smooth muscle cells of the mammary glands and also stimulates the release of lactogenic and galactopoietic factors from the anterior pituitary gland. Here this diagram shows the suckling reflex also called as milk ejection reflex it is a neuroendocrinal reflex when a baby suckles breast the sensory nerve endings or receptors located in the skin of areola and nipple get stimulated these sensory impulses are then transmitted to the hypothalamus and activation of hypothalamus causes the release of prolactin and oxytocin hormone from the pituitary gland this oxytocin reaches the epithelial cells of the breast that is myoepithelial cells of the breast through blood where it causes the contraction of the myoepithelial cells and within 30 seconds milk is released even stimuli like sight sound thought or cry of an infant causes milk ejection in a postpartum female this shows that there is a psychological aspect present in lactation suckling also promotes secretion of prolactin by inhibiting the prolactin inhibitory hormone from the hypothalamus the last phase of lactation is galactopoiesis or maintenance of lactation maintenance of milk secretion depends upon the surge in prolactin secretion This high level or surge in prolactin hormone is maintained by regular breastfeeding. So, in simple words, milk will be ejected continuously as long as the mother breastfeeds her infant. Now, let us see the advantages of breastfeeding. Since milk is a balanced diet for babies, it helps in their healthy growth and development. Human milk has high levels of white blood cells and immunoglobulins. that provide natural immunity against many infections human milk is easy to digest for the babies as it contains casein presence of folate and cobalamin binding proteins helps in easy absorption of vitamins from the milk higher concentration of lactose promotes calcium absorption from the milk and lipases helps in digestion of fats Many growth promoting factors like epidermal growth factor insulin and somatomedin are present in milk. Also, mother's milk is sterile, convenient to give at right temperature and inexpensive, also hypoallergic to the infant. This finishes today's lecture. Thank you.